Guys, just put the five stars all the time. Like you go to your best hotel with the five stars. <laughs> rate the podcast with five stars. End of the story. It looks like we're gonna get those guys fired today, huh, guys? Oh, I got what I got what Paulo said. They're gonna be looking for another job. Maybe doing the shirts in the back on <laughs> for free. <laughs> no air conditioning. Oh Jeez. man, it's hot today, though. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Serie A audio experience with IFTV. Dad, you're back from Aruba. Looking Got tanned. a nice tan over here. <laughs> Look, you had people looking for you in Aruba. That's we had some true. comments. Oh, I got to see Gaetano in Aruba. Gaetano's going to go out with the hat so no one recognizes him now, yeah. right? <laughs> I told you, you think if you went to Aruba, people would want to see you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't oh, think so. Uh, anyway, um, yesterday you guys heard uh, what Michael and I ranted about. Um, in our video about the Roma Liverpool game, we gave a lot of our perspective. We also touched upon um, what we're gonna ask them about because the best part about this, after we posted that about our comments, they said, "Listen, for the way you guys are mad, they said I can't wait to see Antonio, uh, Antonio and Gaetano rip these guys apart <laughs> afterwards because obviously we know that you guys have had um, your pains on it." But anyway, before we go to that, let's talk about the match for a minute. Antonio, what do you think about? Um, Roma Liverpool, the tie ended seven to six. Let me remind you, you already got Catuso texting you. Well, I gotta tell you something. I didn't see the game live. I just saw half of the game live. But when I, when I, uh, I mean, when I left uh, after the first half because I was busy at work, I didn't see Roma body language conducive to to really wanted to fight for the game because they were down at the end of the first half. We're down, uh, you know, a two one. But then uh, when I went to watch some uh, the, the additional li- highlights and all the rest of the, the way the Roma half. came on the second half, I just, uh, you know, I changed to- totally uh, my uh, view and my perspective toward, uh, you know, the way Di Francesco put the team back into the field for the second half. I don't know what he told them on, uh, on the lockers room, but uh, they came back uh, maybe, I don't know, revitalized or maybe believe him uh, a, little, a little bit more on themselves. But uh, uh, I'm the, what the things that really I am so sick on my stomach is the fact of hearing all of those uh, losers or commentators <laughs> i don't even know how to call them just uh, you know you right the that, first time which they have a narrative to me there is a narrative some sort of a narrative going on on uh, outside italy that they really want to put us down not a uh, 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 club levels only but even uh, at the national level so uh, and no matter how you do it or what you do and how well you play they are they're gonna find something to just do to just uh, spray and uh, just inject some negativity into the our way of uh, uh, of playing soccer and uh, looking at soccer and just uh, even talking about soccer because uh, I mean if you analyze those commentators what they were saying I think they had nothing no business talking about <laughs> soccer whatsoever a lot of them don't even know that the ball is is round <laughs> you know we're, we're gonna have you guys we're gonna play the audio and we're gonna have uh, you guys both react the to the penalties were version. outrageous yeah. for yeah, me the penalties sure. the offside that was not an offside and uh, they were outrageous I mean uh, right and there two penalties that could put Roma over the top and uh, nobody would be complaining right now if Roma won the game five to two or six to two so uh, and and last week um, Michael and I, I remember coming on here and we told you guys what happened mm. when it was, what was it, 4 0 5 0 at the time with Roma Liverpool. Mm. And we were complaining. We said Salah's goal, not Salah's goal, Salah's assist was offsides. It was clearly offsides. Yeah. And people commented, commented to us, how are you complaining about an offside goal when it's 5 0? They're like, this, who game, cares? This, this game has yeah. been over. Who cares at the yeah. point of 5 0? They said, who but cares? now that one goal, I'm not saying that one's decisive. And I know that the game changes it makes if you don't difference. give a goal. But I'm just saying, it's just a to say it's not okay to be like okay since it's four five zero it's okay that one goal was offside. this goes to show the game is never over and yes so much literally everyone was saying and that got me so annoyed because look they scored two goals at the end of the game and the game was back on if there was var if the ref made a couple more calls we could have seen roma through you know but what I'm before saying? before we get more into the calls what do you think about the match no i uh, i criticized uh the francesco on the first game because he got five goals and i thought it he should have, uh, I didn't like his tactics on, on that game. Uh, on this game, he, uh, he went with the four in the back, which I, I thought uh, it was much better. I thought he put a good formation on, um, on the field. I feel so bad for Nangolan on that first goal. Um, but then uh, Liverpool gave one back to them, yeah. so it was even. I said, okay. That's fine. They need to score three goals. I think we're back into the uh, into the game, and then that goal, which uh, they had, uh, uh, yeah, that should have never happened. But I thought that Di Francesco did a, a much better job to put the team. 
And I criticized so much to Francesco for getting five goals, but Liverpool almost got five goals mm -hmm. from Roma. I mean, they were very close. I mean, if you, they scored four goals, that was clearly two penalties. I mean, that, that was clear. The one on Dzeko, that was a clear penalty. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the handball. The handball, yeah. I mean, the handball was, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Now, it's difficult because of the referee, it's live, it happens so fast, that's why everybody now is calling injustice and everybody wants to, you know, wants the video reply so that they can, things like that, uh, they, can, uh, they can review and they can make the right calls. It's all about making the right call, that's all about. Uh, so you can tell me anything you want to tell me, at the end you need to make the right call and if the video can help, you make the right call, um, that's the way to go. Not to get off topic, but it's it's about the VAR. I think not just about the video replay, something Antonio, you've been talking about always, which is to have somebody on the sideline, which we all agreed with, yeah. that, that checks all the plays. Because, again, not to stray away from Roma, we're going to keep the conversation about that, but another game that happened today, Marseille-Salzburg, that I just showed you the highlights, this team went into extra time after tying the game, and Marseille in the 115th minute was given a corner kick that it was clear that the that the defender or his own teammate hit the ball for a corner kick. They score the goal. They win the game, and they're in the final of the Europa League. Mm. So not just the VAR because the VAR only checks, um, you know, goals or um, whatever, whatever. I don't think even VAR would have been able to bring this one back. But also somebody on the sideline who just simply checks. No, no need to stop the game. They just look over. Oh, okay. Was that a corner? Because the 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 goal, the not the goalkeeper, the coach of Salzburg was screaming his. He's like, that's a, he saw that it wasn't a corner kick. Just somebody there, it calms him down. It's like, oh, somebody checked the replay. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I saw it wrong. But to calm everybody down, because if you're a Salzburg fan and everyone criticizes us that we're so biased towards Roma and the Italian teams, which we are, we're Italian football TV. I think that's pretty pretty obvious. But also just injustice calls, which to me, that's another one. So that's why I bring that up. You know, I just I want to just get back to you. I mean, for a corner kick, yes, no, but things like that. But, you know, on a critical point, when you have an offside that is running offside and the guy scored or it's just been, you know, is being knocked down by the goalkeeper and a penalty that it was a clear penalty and you don't give it. That's really outrageous. I mean, I think there is some sort of narrative out there that we see the same referees year after year, refing those finals, semifinals and quarterfinals, that makes me think about it. And the simple reasons why they do not want to implement the VAR into the UEFA and the Champions League and the World Cup, I think speaks volume about who's in charge of, uh, uh, of the in, in soccer right now. It's in charge just the big guns of Real Madrid, Barcelona, and the six or seven other teams that uh, when, uh, when they get to, to the to the you know crucial points or to the to those key games i think they have some controls over the referees and if they're not afraid why they don't implement the var the var is a system that puts everybody on the same on the same line i said hey what's yes or no i mean whether you are uh, you are uh, rich or poor that's the level the level that you know everybody should be uh, judged upon so uh What's the, what's the point? Why they don't want to implement it? I know that there are some, a lot of money circulating behind the scenes over there. Let me, let me say, I don't okay. know about that, but let me say what Monchi said after the match, who, of course, he's very upset. His team was nearly in the final. He said, all credit to Liverpool. I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but there were two penalties for Roma tonight that would have changed the entire match for us. I just can't understand how the most prestigious cup tournament in the, in the world doesn't use VAR. Listen, right now we could be watching, we could be witnessing a Ju Juventus Roma final. If Juventus was not penalized against Real Madrid and Roma was not penalized today, I mean yesterday, this could have been, I mean, hey, a great chance, I would say a 50 50 chance that we could have seen two Italians playing the final of the Champions League. Okay? I, I, You're telling me there is nothing, and then at the end of the day, you hear comments from Alexis Salas and all of those uh, ex footballers. That, I don't know, they were never great. And all of a sudden now they find themselves uh, be, being, uh, you know, uh, behind the screen over there and making judgment call about, uh, about an entire team and about, and about an, an entire, uh, you know, uh, way of uh, playing soccer. We taught soccer to everybody in the world. Brazilian, they came to Italy to learn how to play soccer. Okay? 
as far as I'm concerned. Well said, Antonio. Um, from, oh, oh. from Cassano, right? Yes. <laughs> they, yes. All of Brazil came there to mesmerize Cassano. To that seems, with that that seems uh, like the most subject. We, Come we, on. We're going away from... Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's it's it's so come. upsetting to me. I mean, uh, hey, listen. Yeah. We are, we're not robbing anybody, we're, but we don't want to be robbed at the same time. What's fair is fair. Call it the right way. Get the bar into the UEFA and the Champions League and the World Cup. Nobody should be going home just slapped around just because they do not have the money and the political power to be uh, to be facing uh, you know uh, or to be uh, you know uh, challenging uh, calls like that. There's I definitely would be very the money angry. to have VAR, but what are you gonna say? No, I was gonna say uh, I agree with uh, Monchi. You know, not to take away anything from Liverpool. I mean, Liverpool is a, is a very good team. Uh, but you know, if there is a penalty, uh, you know, let it let them take the penalty and let's see what v- Liverpool then does once uh, you know once the game uh, uh, once the game is tied because that game could have been a five-two game for uh, exactly. uh, for Roma. Exactly. You know, let them. It's it's a shame. It's a shame. And then the other thing that upsets me is, uh, like you said, when you hear these uh, commentators from Fox. Um, especially uh, uh, Alexi Lalas, uh, that he played in Italy, and uh, he knows the level of uh, soccer that that he played with. And uh, he's so uh, he's got no respect for I- Italian soccer. Uh, every time that something happens, he trying to make a joke. If it's a, if it's a penalty, oh, that was a nice save. That's what it, that's the comment that he made. When uh, when Asheravi took the shot, I mean the guy looked like a goalkeeper. He went like this. He stopped the, go- mm. the ball from going in, and the only thing that he could say was, uh, "You know, oh, that was a nice save." If it was the other way around, he would start screaming and yelling, "That was a penalty!" And you know, then uh, that's um, that that gets me upset. One of the five. Do you? I don't know if it was him that said. Was it him that said? Yeah, it was, that was him. Um, that was him. It was a nice save. Before we get into what happened with with the other commentators, um, you touched upon and you touched upon um, what did what happened in the locker room with Di Francesco, and you touched upon Klopp. And I want to read this. They put these um, these quotes inside Roma's locker room mm. um, before the match, and it says the fact that it's tough doesn't mean it's impossible. The word improbable just means that it could happen. And then it said Io ci credo, I believe. Mm-hmm. And this was a slogan. Di Francesco said. I live my life by the slogan I believe. So whoever doesn't believe, you don't have to come. You have no and, business about being on the field to begin that, with. Everything that I'm going to do is just about believing. I believed against Barcelona. I believed in every match. And that's what we're going to do. And and I think that, that not enough credit is given to Di, Di Francesco. It's his first year in Champions League. Coming from can, Sassuolo. Can I say this again? It is Eusebio Di Francesco's first season in Champions League. He could not have been dealt a harder deck of cards. He was in the group of death with Chelsea and Atletico Madrid. He came in first place. He he played against Barcelona, Messi's Barcelona, the greatest in the world. He came back and beat Barcelona. He was criticized for going five goals down against Liverpool. He nearly did the same exact scoreline to this club who's a, a genius by everybody's terms. And I'm not taking away anything from Liverpool. I respect Liverpool. I think Liverpool did a lot better um, than than I expected, and Klopp with a little help, Klopp, with Klopp, a little Klopp, help, with a listen, lot we, we of little help. <laughs> Klopp, I don't know about that. <laughs> Klopp is a good coach, but what I'm just saying is that everyone everyone was ready to say, "Look at this disgusting Roma in the defense. Look at this Roma." I mean, some they of the trash comments, Manolas, but 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 that Liverpool scored conceded six goals. Why are you making it like it was 7-0? It was 6. And if you take away your offsides goal, then it would have been Roma conceding 6, right? And you give the two penalties, it would have been, you know, obviously it doesn't play out the same way. But I'm just saying, have a little bit of respect. Di Francesco, and I know, and what it, what sickens me the most is all the fans out there, Serie A fans, who take something away from Roma. Oh, congratulations on the trophy that you won. Getting the Champions League semifinal for Roma, that is like a trophy. Le- this is the relevancy that they get from playing in this. The experience, the stadium. Jimmy Conrad was at the stadium. He said, uh, he goes, I'm sorry, Bernabeu, but what I experienced tonight at the Stadio Olimpico, he said, was unbelievable. Like, give some respect where it's deserved. That's that's what bothers Marco, me the most. Marco, let, let's, let's close this chapter. Congrats, up. Roma. Roma deserves a congratulations. Congratulations they, to Roma, they, uh, Di Francesco, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the management, and Palotta, and everybody they else. They played a great, a great Listen, game. Listen, 
we're not going to be talking about this Alexis Sal- uh, Salas anymore because Salas. it's not worth it. Alexis, right? What, what was Alexi his name? Lala. Lala's, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it doesn't well, matter. The only, way, the only way that this guy here was recognized in the Serie A, it was because of his red hair. Other than that, nobody <laughs> nobody knows what he did. No, I don't know if he played <laughs> a defense <laughs> midfield the or the beard, beard too, whatever. Uh, you know, nobody knows. I, this guy didn't invent anything. He was just, uh, he was lucky enough to be drafted by one of those uh, teams that they, they, uh, they almost went in Serie B because of him. <laughs> the guy never did <laughs> anything. <laughs> and he's got even the oh, nerves geez. to criticize Italy. But it's not and about that. No, it's just very, 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 very he, stupid. He, bl- he played at a higher level than all of us. What level? What listen, level? Listen, no, no. Come but, on. Because it's not even about that. I just think it's it's a lack of education and, and a bias. I just think that the people who commentate, and I'm going to play the clip right now, I really think I want to know how many Roma games they've watched. I want to know how many Roma games they watched, and I want to know how many Roma games with an open mind. Not just see what you want to see, mm. because that's what you that's that's the narrative that you uh, have. Apparently, one or two of the pundits I think was associated with the Liverpool. One was a Liverpool player or something okay. like that too. And three of the four are English, and the other one that wasn't English mm. supports Liverpool. Mike, this is a narrative that has been going on, and not now. It's been four yeah. or five years right now. That yeah, every time that any Italian clubs, it's at, uh, it, it reaches the top, like Juventus the last couple of years, like the cha- the champions. Uh, uh, the Champions League final that could have been again another Champions League final this year if they didn't take away the, the you know if they didn't give another another Christmas present to uh, Real Madrid <laughs> to give the penalty over there Roma was penalized again the Italian soccer it's a highest one of the highest level in all Europe yeah. as far as Germany is, co- is concerned who do they have in Germany they have Bayern they have uh, Borussia Dortmund they have three teams the same way the Spanish the Spain League the Sp- La-, La Liga they have Real Madrid they have Barcelona they have Manchester uh, what do you call it Atletico, they have, uh, Atletico. Yeah. those are the three teams in Italy the competition is still going on right now everybody's pretty much level from so the sure. from the very top to the very bottom you have five six teams playing for the for the last 10 weeks at the highest level trying to Champions overtake League, each line Scudetto, that's what I'm saying the bottom nothing is safe in Italy you can be losing you can be Juventus and losing against Benevento exactly. like AC Milan you lost against Benevento everything in Italy it's nothing uh, what you witness in uh, in Spain or uh, France or uh, England or uh, you know where the, the big fish eats the small fish mm-hmm. We play the soccer the right way. We try not to rub anybody. And we are implementing the VAR because we want soccer to be fair and to be just for everybody. So you put everybody on the same le- level playing, playing field, level playing field, and you just let the, the spectator judge who's the better uh, right, soccer let's team. Uh, let's listen to well what... Well said, uh, Antonio. I think you said that well. Let's so, say what... Um, yeah. What the... This guy said. So we're going to react to what um, ESPN's post-match coverage. This is um, a minute and 30 seconds from an eight-minute long show. But having watched it all, there was nothing else um, to really take from it. Who's this guy here now? I have no clue. The two legs, though, it's difficult to put an argument against the fact that Liverpool deserve to go through. Anytime you want to pause it, pause it, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's arguing that. Liverpool are better than Roma. They are the better team. There is no doubt that Liverpool deserve to be in the final and that they have earned their way into the final. It's just, it shouldn't have been this way. It shouldn't have been so difficult. We shouldn't have had Steven Nichol having a heart attack in the green room. That shouldn't be happening. Throwing stuff around. That shouldn't be happening. I think something we saw over these two legs as we take a look at your, your, your player ratings for Roma, Ali. Roma aren't a very good team. No, they're not. No, they're not. So I told you that. Oh, it's, 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 I told you that months ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible to then not ask the question, what was going on with Barcelona? Yeah. That's However, very true. Yeah. 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 But we move on. That's a long story. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and part of that is, I mean, you look at a team that defensively, they have their issues. You know Liverpool have issues defensively? This team has issues defensively. Fascio, nah. No thanks. No, appreciate it. But I don't want it. Man, no, minor last, no thank you. I don't want it. Oh, my it. God. Cotto I'll take him. Cannot defend. Out of the midfield, the Rossi, yes, a, a, a lot of experience, but can't run. And that's difficult when you have a team in transition with Liverpool that is going to expose that, that lack of speed. I thought Jekyll was active. I thought he was the best player that they had in the field. Schick was good at times in the midfield. And I said, I would cause some problems in, uh, down the left-hand side. Overall, just Roma is just simply a team that is not good enough. Okay, this four idiots. Eat uh, them. We're gonna learn some Eat Italian curse words today, this, boys. These four idiots. One more idiot than the <laughs> other one. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, you know where he played this guy. Ven- okay, I find. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I, saw, I, saw, I don't want to okay. say. Okay. I don't want to okay. say. Um, he, actually, he didn't play at very high level, but Ooh. whatever he played, he does not. Uh, how can you talk about Roma like this? 
a team that eliminated Barcelona and Messi, who is the best player right now in the world. Uh, how can they talk about Roma like this? And then you're telling me about Manuel. Alisson is one of the best goalkeepers around. Manolos is an excellent defender who, who he played great against uh, Barcelona. Fazio is, ah. an, is in the national team of Argentina. He's a very good player. Florenzi is a top player. Okay, uh, Kolarov maybe defensively is uh, is very good offensively. I mean, he's like a, a left wing and he makes a lot of crosses. But I, I don't understand. Nine Golan, why don't you go through the list? Nine Golan is one of the best. Uh, De Rossi doesn't listen. This those guys they judge the game on the speed. Okay, where Manuel, if uh, if uh, if uh, what's his name, uh, Salas uh, and uh, Mane, they're faster than somebody else. They're probably faster than De Rossi. Do they think they're better than De Rossi? It's got nothing to do with that. De Rossi can just take them to the cleaner anytime he wants. <laughs> so this is what they, this is the pro this is the kind of commentators you have. They judging the player based on the speed. If you can run faster, you are a better player. It's not how you handle the ball, how you look at the game, how you pass the ball, how you just uh, you. Know, control the tempo those are people that they just judge in the game based on the players that they can just run faster that's why we have Dembele now we have this other guy over there well, uh, it's it, ridiculous you know, that's garbage it's not that, I mean Liverpool garbage. like we said before Liverpool is a good team yes. they, they play they play very well but for you to comment and do not give any respect to Roma that it's unacceptable what do you think about him saying they they said um, Roma is not a very good team. And then the other guy, <laughs> I've been saying this the whole time. I've been saying that for months, you <laughs> said. And, yeah. and then he says, and then he says, you have to wonder, what, what happened to Barcelona? He doesn't, the, it was the one of the most unbelievable comebacks in Champions League history. 3-0 against Barcelona. And he makes it that Barcelona, it was Barcelona who didn't play good. Well, that's no. That they they actually they, what they imply on that comment over there is that how can they let Roma tiny do that little Roma, to them? Exactly. tiny little exactly. Roma, right? How can they let them do that to them? And saying Roma's not a very good team, they they, they the disrespect you know to what a team we make in the that... Champions League in the Champions League semifinals, the disrespect to a team that they make this look like. 5-0 that if you if you hear these comments without knowing a score you would say it was 5-0 to Liverpool you would not say the score right. was 7 to 6 and you would not hear them talk about the three penalties. two penalties and one offsides goal why would they say that? I, I wonder. I wonder what would have happened if Roma went through. They probably would have said, "Oh, it was lucky. It was this." They're gonna get beat. I make gonna a suggestion. Let's not talk about those three losers, three four losers over there on uh, on uh, on the commentating stuff. Let's focus on the technicalities of the game and uh, and the technical aspect of the the game. I want to. So, I uh, want to say what um, because to be honest, um, one of I, I okay first after we made the video. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, people talking about it. A lot of people didn't hear it until we said something. And, I, you know, I was disappointed that a lot more people didn't come out and, and speak about this. People have a voice. I think it's important that you, you fairly share your voice with other people to see things like this that are disgraceful comments. I would have liked to see more people jump in and, and talk about this. Um, and I will say my problem is not with ESPN. My problem is with these four guys. But and it doesn't reflect completely on ESPN. And, and I, I will respect anyone's comments. Antonio, you even said it when we called you crazy about Cassani. You said, it's my opinion. I'm allowed my opinion. But at the table, you can't have everyone who has the same exact opinion and disrespect a team in the Champions League semifinal. You need If, if this guy said that, and then there was Bobo Vieri on the other side who said, what, are you kidding me? You say Roma's not a good team? Then I'm like, okay, that's fair. But for you to put these four people All in this four position, of them, they believe I in the it, same exact I, I think that's opinion. very disrespectful. And I'm very happy that James Palotta came out. And uh, let me read what he said to you, what, what he said about this. He said, I turned on the TV at 4 a.m. to watch ESPN FC. And you have a jackass like that guy, Alejandro, whatever the hell his name is, making a stupid comment about, oh, let's face it. Roma's not a good team. No. Every single and right. Palota has every yeah, single right to say this. 100%. I want to. I want to. And respect to Roma, who also posted it. They posted the video that we yeah. edited up together, calling him crazy, saying Alejandro, you are crazy. And you know his response on Twitter? It was not an apologetic anything. The only time he comes out, and apparently what they're saying is that now he says sorry to Palota. Yeah, you need the president of the club to come say sorry. When he said, "Oh, all you passionate Roma fans are nice," but. 
um, leave, leave. Let's face it, they weren't good enough. Let's face it, this is my opinion. He was like, "What do you guys want? Hugs and kisses for conceding seven goals?" Listen, that's, the- that's what he says. But now he needs. Now he says sorry when the president of the club comes calling. You know why you don't hear you? You only hear this negative comment about those uh, those three or four network. Nothing to nothing to take away from them. I mean, I love ESPN. I love uh, I love uh, being. Uh, I mean, hey, uh, I respect what they do. You you but, have their channels, but and I subscribe to them too, but. <laughs> To have them only place those f- those guys over there, there is a reasons behind that. Because if you if you go uh, around away from those three or four channels, <laughs> and you go in Europe, you go in Italy, you go everywhere, you're gonna see that the cameras are completely different. There is a lot of outrage over there. To uh, you know, uh, to the fact that, that uh, we we were penalized. Mm-hmm. Juventus was penalized and Roma was penalized. Am I going to be crying the rest of, uh, of my life? No, but it is what it is right now. So the only thing, the only people that have been uh, placed on, on primetime TV are those guys just, uh, you know, uh, uh, denigrating the way, uh, uh, our way of playing soccer and the way we, we uh, approach soccer. And Di Francesco, I tip my hat to him. I mean, uh, the first half I didn't like it, but uh, when I went back and watched the game entirely because I, I had to work, yeah, yeah. I think he did a great job and so... Same thing with Palotta, just to stand up for the Roma and just, uh, you know, uh, take a stand for, uh, for his own club. Okay. Anything else? No. no. <sighs> it was disappointing. It's disappointing for Roma, but again, I want to reiterate that this, to me, is, is, is 100% a win for Roma. But yeah, whatever happens, you got to see how far they went. It was incredible. They're, clo- they're tied for third place in Serie A, and l- like we said, unlimited uh, applause for Di Francesco, because what he did was and, incredible this year. And to the players who, I mean, they you have to have a great mental strength to yeah. keep coming back the way that they did. You know, they came back against Chelsea. They came back against Shakhtar. They came back against Barcelona. They did come back against Liverpool. But if you hear the, the, the comments of the great, great players, you mm-hmm. know, they all said, you know, Roma, you know, they should going the, with their heads up. Yeah. That's how they, they should because of 100%. The, game, uh, the game that they played. But we're talking about some of the players that played in the World Cup level, some of the players that, that played at a certain level. That's what they said. Not these guys from ESPN, you know, what the hell did they... Uh, well, uh, yeah, what the hell do they know? It's a shame because ESPN has a good name mm-hmm. and, and a, a good reputation. And then to have th- these guys that are, it seems like they have no idea what, what they're talking about. It's a shame because uh, I don't know who's watching them, but I'm certainly not going to watch. It gives ESPN a bad the, name. Yeah, no, they do a disservice yeah, to yeah, ESPN. Yeah, Listen, exactly. Exactly. that's right. Exactly. Catano, when Roma lost right. the first leg, don't you remember we were very disappointed the way this Francesco plays the team, plays the team on on the field like the 3-5-2? Yes. Yeah. yes. And we were, uh, you know, equally cri- critical of the, the exactly. his choice. Right. So uh, we're not here addressing, uh, you know, we, because we, we are Italians, we have to take just... No, the I criticize. Like I said, I just say it as it is. I said it in the beginning. So, uh, but, you know, I think they did... It. I mean, to all the respect of ESPN, and uh, they think those guys they did more of a disservice to the network that uh, and and this, and soccer at the same time because exactly. they, they don't know. Then I think the partisan, and I think they have some sort of uh, issues with Italian uh, soccer yeah, and Italy they never, as well. They probably never played. They never soccer. played soccer. Maybe here, yeah, you're right. One or, one, or one what level did they play? One of the other things I wanted to say about us posting the video, we also said in the post, we said we think it would be fair if you put somebody over here to challenge. I said. Bring one of us and we'll talk with them. Like, I want to have a conversation about the game. How you say Roma's not a good team. I think we'll be fair. And I think the amazing thing about this was the unity from everybody. In a time where everybody's always divided, we're divided in the Campionato. Even when, you know, Roma or Juventus play in Europe, there's still some people who hate it. Even, even them, even from Lazio fans who said, I did not want Roma to go through. But on the other hand, you know... It, I appreciate all the comments for us, for IFTV, for the, everybody saying thank you guys for sticking up for Italian football. Nobody else gives gives a, a, a voice voice, voice yeah. for us and to you for you guys to have, to be posting this, for you guys to be commenting on this, for you to go there and actually say something where everyone else is scared to say something. I just want to appreciate over a thousand comments from people, which is incredible. Uh, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for sticking together, and thank you for saying now. Listen. I didn't know. I didn't really want Roma to win, but it's Italy against the world. No one is gonna give the respect, so we need to stick together and we need to support each other. Because other than that, there's not gonna be a way for us to go through. So I want to appreciate yeah, exactly. everybody who sent those comments in. And we have some <clears throat> some questions from some people. Michael Fareone says, "Do you think Roma can turn this semifinal exit 
into a turning point to get as far uh, to get as far or further in the competition next year. And what about even winning the Scudetto next season? For Roma to build off this. And let me add, De Rossi made a comment too after the match that he said, my only thing is I don't want this to become every 30 years. This needs to become more consistent mm-hmm. than that. 100%. So, oh, I would say definitely. Definitely. I think Roma is a, it's a, it's a team that the last three or four years has been up there for uh, the first couple of Two, for second or third places I got close a couple of times I mean it was a la- lagging few times behind Juventus but uh, mm-hmm. you know I, I, I said it a few times I think Juventus cycle it's at the end now with some of the old guards it's going to be uh, uh, probably retiring and uh, it, there's going to be plenty of opportunities for teams like Roma, Inter, AC Milan, Lazio mm-hmm. and uh, Napoli of course to be challenging Juventus uh, for uh, for the, uh, the Scudetto. But not that it means a lot, but uh, we, you know, for Juventus maybe it might, might not mean a lot, but for other teams that they, they've been starving to, uh, to wear the, the tricolore on their shirt, it means a lot. And at the same time, we wanted to see those teams step up in Europe the way we used to be uh, 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 at the greatest level. Let me remind some of those commentators over there hmm. that AC Milan, Juventus and Inter, they, w- they, they're they are the world. and they, they yeah. were and Inter. they still are some of the top uh, five or ten teams in the, in the world. That's yeah. it. As a Roma fan, where do you think Roma can build off this, if they can build? No, I think that Roma with uh, Pallotta as a president, Gandini mm-hmm. as the CEO and uh, Totti. Monchi. The, uh, Monchi, that we see him, uh, you know, watching the games i think they have those four people they are the right uh, uh management team with one or two players next year they can definitely uh win the scudetto uh, and the champions can, league and they can definitely be in the same uh, place for the uh for the champions league they're not too far away isn't it also a little bit funny and ironic that let's be honest you think if, if salah wasn't on liverpool would liverpool even be in the semifinals right now if Salah was still on Roma, oh, now we're just guessing. No, 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 I want to say that's it. A, no, that's a good point. No, I know. No, I would but, say no. I mean, the guy scored what forty that's goals? True. No, no, yeah, over Absolutely. forty goals. Most likely not, but it's just, th- yeah. that that guy came from Serie A. All, all the disrespect you want to give us, but this is a guy that he came from. He's Serie a. the one that I said it so many times that admitted the fortune of Spalletti. Mm-hmm. Because Spalletti, no, every, you know, everybody's <laughs> talking <laughs> this know. big thing about Spalletti. I mean, yeah. Spalletti yeah. could be a good coach, but it wasn't for for this guy here for uh, Salah. Salah. <laughs> Paletti will be will be uh, maybe uh, coaching uh, Elas Verona. That's true. Okay, so this guy has made a fortune of uh, of Roma and had made he had made the fortune of uh, Zeko at the same time, and now he's making the fortune of Liverpool. And when you see the, I I want to say one more thing about this Champions yeah, League. Say it. When I want to put Liverpool and Real Madrid now playing the final, I think the quality of Real Madrid by far. Is gonna just they they can overtake this Liverpool. But it's one game at doesn't the end of matter. The I no, think it does matter. Real Madrid has got happen. players that Liverpool will it's dream about it. I, but I'm just saying, you saying to me, but one game at the end of We won now, none in this game here, none on the final. Number one, Klopp. I took, I tip my hat to him. He's a very good coach. He's a mm-hmm. great coach. I respect him. But Zidane with the squad that he has over there, watch. It's going to be the classical Sunday. I'm not sure if Zidane is going to be playing all of those big guns over there because Zidane is thinking about winning the the, the champions, uh, the final of the Champions League. From what I heard, the last time Real Madrid ever lost the Champions League final was in 1981, I want to mm-hmm. say, against Liverpool. Wow. What do you think about the final? Who do you want to win yeah. and who do you think is going to win? Who do you want to win? I want Real Madrid to win. Okay. Number one, because they beat Juventus and they should never have uh, 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 been allowed to but go so forward. So did Liverpool. Doesn't matter. But, but so why are you going to go for a little bit? No, but uh, because, because of all of these negative comments that they've been saying about Roma and all the stuff. Oh, okay. At this point, I'd rather Real Madrid to win. And I have a lot more sympathy for Zidane than, uh, than uh, some of the, the, no, I, the I guys. I wanted to on, say uh, what you said about Salas, you know, Salah. Would they, Salah, would they be uh, in yeah. this position? And, and that's a very good point. Because Salah is the, is the one that creates all the uh, problems for the other teams. Once you have somebody that's so fast and can beat his men all the time, that creates a uh, disimbalance in uh, in the defense because you then you need to bring you 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 dribble one guy then the other defender has to go and all of a sudden mm-hmm. uh, the, the defense uh, is less you have less to defend so that that was uh, that was a very good point also let me add on to that real quick about that mono loss comment because i got to be honest with you I feel like I saw a different game than the ESPN on the part of Manolas because to me, Manolas had Salah in his pocket. If you see every run that Salah, even when Salah was ahead of him, Manolas caught up to him, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. No, Sa- Salah didn't do anything. In the, in the, the in second To be honest. In Rome, uh, I don't know if he Did, was... Don't you uh, think? No, I thought Manolas had a great I thought Manolas played a great game. Francesco really learned. He was like, okay, I, I we got to close him. I thought so and they too. Actually if close it was the, the stadium or if it was Roma, but Salah yeah. didn't do anything. And I thought Manolas did a very good job. Yeah. A very 
very good job. Not a three. Yeah. I anyway, I didn't want to cut you off. Go. About the you were gonna say about the Champions League final. The Champions League, right? Uh, I think that uh, Real Madrid is a better team all around. By far. And, and who do you and yeah. who do you want to win? Yeah, yeah. Do you have Real, a, a team that you prefer? No, Real Madrid. I want uh, Real Madrid. Gaetano, how, can I ask you something, uh, or maybe all, all of you? Who would you? Uh, yeah, uh, just who would you <laughs> place on Salah? Or how would you stop Salah if you were uh, uh, if yes, you are Zidane? <laughs> you asked this question last time. Too. Uh, did I? I don't yeah. remember. Not not about this game, uh, but before the two full backs uh, from. Uh, uh, Real Madrid, they're pretty fast too. So yeah, but Salah, you know, well, it's gonna come, Salah is going to come to the right wing. From the so. right wing. So, but they have they are fast players. You know, uh, if he goes on the other side, sometimes he goes on the other side too. Mm. But both, uh, both full backs, they, they're pretty fast. And, so know, what is I, the key to win this game then for Real Madrid? I think it's going to be Modric all the time. He's, he's, the, he's the man. It's Modric just uh, just uh, con, uh, controlling the tempo on the midfield, and then uh, maybe even Modric doubling up on, on uh, Salah on somebody else. Uh, that is uh, is kind of a dangerous. Uh, from the midfield side. Is, uh, is they have a yeah. great midfielders uh, Real Madrid and the forward line. I mean, it's the very mm -hmm. very difficult. Uh, they got speed, they got technique, they got Strength. everything. Would Strength. you would you play, would you place Benzema uh, on the front, or would you actually give a a chance to Bale uh, to start or the game? Or Asensio or somebody. To, because Bell, Bell has got he's got speed and he's got a lot of quality. Yeah. Benzema yeah. played good though. Mm. Yeah, but he's not using. Uh, he's not using him a lot. He's not using but he Bell. used Benzema against. Oh, Bell, okay, Bell. Bell comes yeah. uh, afterwards in the, in the second half. Only That's the way he's mm -hmm. been doing it. So I don't think he's going to change that. Maybe because the rumors so are that he's going to leave the team. Maybe go to Milan. I wish I'll <laughs> take him. <laughs> Guys, I actually, I actually want to go back to the the question about Roma and stuff. Yeah. Uh, if they if they can uh, replicate it next season, I think they got to use this as leverage. Di Francesco is actually saying uh, Roma put their head down too much, you know, when uh, they concede a goal. And he, Di Francesco bring this winning mentality that Roma haven't had in uh, Europe, you know, in the Champions League. And I feel like he's gonna do amazing next season too. And uh, it was actually came out, I think, recently today that Roma made over a hundred million just in Europe. So with that money, they could definitely keep the big name players. They can even bring one or two more world-class players, people that are aging, someone that wants to leave, and replace that. Uh, then have, you know, Monchi, we all know he's great in the Mercato, and Di Francesco is going to have an extra year with his experience side. So I feel like Roma could really be even taking over Napoli's spot. Because I, I feel like you. Napoli, a lot of these, uh, the team's going to deplete, a lot of these superstars are going to be leaving. So I, I, I could see Juve and Roma really being the top dogs for the Scudetto next season. I think that's a, a great analysis of it. I think Roma have more of a foundation than Napoli do. 100%. And uh, I'm, I'm cheering for Schick that he comes through. Yeah, I like Schick. I like Schick. Like that, yeah. that he starts uh, Mike. scoring goals. Like, um, who do you want to win? Who do you think is going to win? I really don't like Real Madrid at all. Just just because I feel like there's so much so much more favoritism. So uh, I'm slightly going to be going for Liverpool only because listen, Liverpool didn't do anything. We're all we're screaming at the rest right now. Liverpool has nothing yeah. to do with anything. So I have nothing against them. Sometimes these English fans are a little crazy, but well, who do you uh, think is gonna I win? think I don't think Real Madrid is going to let this uh, let this slide out of so their hands. Real I think Real Madrid is going to win just because. Ronaldo, the Champions League, I feel like Real Madrid, has, they have in their DNA right now. They're not going to let it slip. They're going to be the only team, if they win it again, to do it again. They broke the record last season, and if they yeah. could do it again, they're really going to make some three crazy history. It's going to go down yeah, as one of the greatest. There were a yeah. few teams that did three you know, in a row. No, nobody's no, done no, three. No, not, not in the Champions, Champions League. League. Not in the Maybe Champions Maybe when it was League. called something else before. Yeah, Marco. Yeah, Europa yeah, Europa yeah, yeah, we're something. saying Champions League. Marco. Oh, okay. Yeah, Caetano, yeah, because, uh, yeah. Uh, Cruyff, I think Cruyff won three in a row. With the same team? With the same team. Real Madrid Ajax. won three in a row. Was uh, in, not, they didn't no, win no, three right? in a row yet. No, Real Madrid did already. Oh, okay. In, in the 50s. I think UEFA's, UEFA Cup. It was yeah, UEFA it was Cup, called, I think it was it was called, called uh, different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they won. It's the same yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. won three in a row when uh, the Stefano was there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then Cruyff won three in a row. And somebody else. AC I'm, Milan. I'm not sure. <laughs> Gattuso. If, it's, uh, if it was Bayern... With Somebody. Beckenbauer, I'm not sure. I want, I want, um, I think Real Madrid are going to win, and I want Real Madrid to win. Um, and it's pretty simple for me. Um, as salty as this makes me, I, I don't want to see, I want to just believe that Real Madrid are the best team. I think they are the best team. And I want to believe, let them have their era. Let them dominate right now. Because um, it would kill me if Liverpool go on and win the Champions League final before 
my Juventus stuff. You want stars. Real Madrid yeah. breaking the yeah. record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah, would you want it. that? I, because because the Liverpool break, wins. What if Liverpool wins? It's no. once. It's once. I'll tell you the reason why. I'll tell you the reason why Marco wants to play Real Madrid to win because Zidane played for Juventus. No. Now he's the coach of Juventus. I don't care about that. That I don't care. I want. I just wanted to win because I want to be the one that stops Real Madrid from winning. I'll tell you the reason why I don't want Liverpool to win because Liverpool took away a championship final from AC Milan when we were yeah. up three nothing and I just <laughs> wish that they were never ever going to win for the next 150 the, years the Antonio Cassano curse they're dead okay um, go Real Madrid <laughs> somebody as somebody. much as I hate to say that I would say go AC Milan but uh, I, if between Real Madrid and Liverpool go Real Madrid 100% we, there was there's a comment from Anthony Barbagallo hmm. and he says ESPN's English pundits got it wrong they said Roma are nobody. Roma had Cassano. Not many teams have the luxury of, fi- of fielding Cassano. <laughs> Is that a joke or for real? I swear to God. <laughs> Respond Listen, to him. You he, only, he clearly made this comment. You so that- only wish. You only <laughs> wish Cassano was on the field. Cassano is a genius of the game. What do you he, have to say to Anthony? It's not, he, I'm, I, remember what I just said. He's still a genius of the game. He was. I didn't say Cassano was a genius. <laughs> Cassano is still a genius of the game. And the guy, if he comes back, he's going to just put everybody to shame. <laughs> So you guys laughing around? You guys laughing around? I will say. Oh, I'm cracking up. Why you gonna say? Antonio, I'll tip my hat to you. You were right. I know that I'm right. He can't even and move anymore. And a lot of the people like me that that they know that I'm right. So uh, respond to Anthony. So Anthony, I I agree with him. I agree with him. You see where you're starting over here? See. You, you're getting this cult of... That's it, man. <laughs> you, you have people, even on our regular post, people just comment, Cassano. Cassano rocks. <laughs> <laughs> We're making t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, Cassano, that's a, little, a little bit off, but Maria asks, what do you think about James Rodriguez not celebrating when he scored? One of the commentators said it was disrespectful to Bayern and the fans Ooh. for not celebrating. Gaetano, I, wanna... I want to hear from you on this I, one. I, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Wait, which one? Wait, not with, with the her. the commentator or with her? With, her? with the commentator. With the commentator. Who I, said it was disrespectful to not celebrate. To, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Why? Wow. Wow. We should have celebrated. I wanted him to celebrate. I that wanted I mean, to smash it in Real Madrid's face. Absolutely. That's this what guy, I wanted. This you guys guy, are nuts, all of you. He, he oh, man. I would have like taken a, my shirt off. I would have got a tattoo he, he, about he, it. He looked like a kid that took the candies away. He went like this. What he almost started crying. I thought I was going to be I will bench him for 20 games because <laughs> of that. You need you. You pay him to score, not to celebrate. I will bench him for 20 games. You guys hear yourself nonsense. What do you guys just say? 25 games, like baby. He missed the penalty on purpose. He just didn't celebrate. to How his fans. He's disrespectful. He's getting paid by Bayern top <laughs> dollar. To score, not to the celebrate. Team. If they pay me to score, forget it. Both. I love this. Both. Ah, I would. I want him to here. celebrate. I gotta be honest. Marco, do they pay you to celebrate or score? Let's yes. be honest. They pay you to celebrate. To celebrate? I mean, my bad, my bad. To score. To okay. Score, okay. No, but I wanted to something. celebrate. I, I don't care what you said. Oh, I wanted. I wanted. Okay. What, what I wanted. You wanted no, no. You do. know what I wanted? Do you guys remember when Adebayor he went to Manchester City and then he scored against Arsenal? He ran from the one side of the field to the other side to the Arsenal fans and he went like this. I want Hamas to do that and jump inside the crowd uh, of Real Madrid. Okay, what if there are two mutual teams, Marco? Be honest. Now. Oh, no, yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't have this. I just wanted to do it against. Real Madrid. Okay, so I you're on my like side, that. I hope, right? That, that game was ridiculous. Too. That was another ridiculous game where every oh, everybody's oh coming. Yeah. They it could have been Bayern versus the Roma Dude, final because if you guys saw the mistake or Juve versus Roma, it could have been uh, all Italian it final. It would have been Juve Roma, Juventus Roma. Did again. They email? Let's email these guys. No, no, no. I'm just saying about the Bayern. I mean, they had even mistakes over there where Real Madrid were favored again. Um, it was it was but a Bayern sh- missed a couple of ch- huge chances too. It they w- shot themselves in the foot too with that goalkeeper. What the hell did he do? Yeah, the the oh goalkeeper of Bayern Munich. Was horrendous. I mean, listen, let's just speak oh a fact. God. Let's say one fact right now. Fact, indisputable. Out of the Champions League semifinalists, Ali Sun is by a country mile the best goalkeeper. 100%. By a country 100%. by by 18 miles, he's a better goalkeeper. Th- I don't think Navas the goalkeeper of Liverpool, I don't know his name, and Old Ultrick, U- Utrecht, o- o- Ulrich. Ulrich, Ulrich, the goalkeeper of Bayern Munich, Utrecht, <laughs> Utrecht. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other ones, the other ones are not that good. They're not even but close Nava, to Alisson. Navas made some saves against. Listen. Yeah, but Alisson makes a lot of mistakes too. Uh, yeah, except Tana, for yes, yes, except for Alisson. Listen, but I didn't see Alisson make mistakes. Except for Alisson, the other three goalkeeper that yeah. you just named, they will even make uh, into the Serie B in Italy. <laughs> believe me. Antonio Donnarumma is better than them by far. By far. By, by far, I'm with you. By oh, far, man. not a joke. I'm not that. I'm not joking about. Yeah, I don't. Sure. I I really think that Navas and um and those other those other goalkeepers were horrible. Even even okay, best center back 
in the in uh, there because we're talking uh, about um they said Manolas who's the best center back out of all four of these teams in the Champions League semifinal. I, I think mean, Manolas is a top top three. Yeah, he's got to be. Top three. If, you, if you had to choose two, I'm if so you had to choose two right from now. these semifinalists, so proud. is it not obvious? Uh, Sergio Ramos, Manolas. Yeah, is that easily obvious? Sergio Ramos. Yeah. You know, Sergio, Sergio Ramos, Ramos Manolas. Good I gotta be games? sincere with you. Sergio Ramos yeah. under pressure is a choker. He, sco- he, choker. he chokes. Yeah, he chokes. Ninetieth minute, this guy scores uh, goals. He's got, he's got an offensive, uh, offensive but if you had quality. Two out of all the semifinals. I would say both of them. Both of them. Yeah. But I don't think he's choose one for these two. I would say both of them. <laughs> That's all. But defensively, Manolas is better oh, yeah. than. Uh, uh, defensively, I would say. Maybe. Defensively, yeah, yeah. yes. Manolas maybe. is a little. But on better. headers, Ramos. But like Sergio Ramos, he's consistent. Sergio Ramos is a Manolas butcher. Manolas is like this. Yeah. When Manolas has a really good game, then it's really third. good. When Manolas doesn't have a good I game, I think offensively, uh, game. Sergio Ramos is a little better than Manolas. But defensively, Manolas, I think it's uh, it's the, it's the man. Because they don't know how to defend in La Liga over there. Yeah, I don't know. Not Anybody get too excited about his Manolas nah, stuff? I read him. I'm getting a tattoo next week, so whatever. <laughs> um, also, very happy that no violence, nothing occurred after the match. It was a very good sign. Mm-hmm. Um, proud of the way the Stadio Olimpico held in all of the the excitement. You know, they they handled it extremely well. I heard that everything was processed really well. They showed so, to the ref in the crowd in the curva. Could you imagine what happened, what happened to that guy? I mean, that, that would have been in peace. It was all the work of Totti and, and all the management of Roma that uh, allowed for this to, uh, to be a... Uh, uh, a wonderful, uh, you know, a celebration of sport and soccer. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, uh, if you don't uh, put the police and you put uh, all of those measures uh, ahead of the time, uh, you're always going to see violence over there. So uh, Again, let me bring one more thing back. Jimmy Conrad, a guy who played in, in America. He played against Italy in the World Cup. He's, he's a friend of ours. He's, he does this too. Um, he said he was at the Bernabeu the day before. He said, listen, sorry, Bernabeu. But this is incredible. And you're talking about a Roma with a racetrack that's uh, 50 <laughs> exactly. miles away. So to say that, it's just the passion from the Roma fans was, was unbelievable. There was a video that we had from inside their, uh, the bus. And you see these fans with, with the red and yellow smoke. And they're screaming their hearts out. So I think, I think Roma, once again, they made all of their fans proud. They made Italy proud. They made football proud. Because not... I won't say not for a second, but over the two legs, they did not give up, and um, I'm very proud of them. No I matter how many more, times they've I, been out, they they always push their way. And back they got to continue this next season. They they got to build off this, and they got to they got to replicate this and build. And one uh, one two other things to the fans that were saying before the match, it's over, it's over. I don't believe. You need to support your team, especially a team that's proved you that they fight and they have hunger. It's not right to automatically say, oh, we're done. Why? why I, I should give up. I should give up. That kind of negativity, it vibes off on the players. And another thing, Di Francesco, once again, a credit to you. People criticized him saying that he's a fraud after the game against Liverpool. Where was the fraud now? No matter what, his head is very high. And I want to know a stat on what coach did better in their first ever Champions League season. Then Di Francesco. I'm sure there's somebody uh, that won it. Don, right? Except for him. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> ah, sure. forget about him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <just> like, <laughs> I forgot how to pause Zidane. Uh, yeah, but Zidane, look at the players that he's got. It's a little bit different. Yeah, I know. That's that's true. True. Did he on his first? Yeah. I his very with first? Who? I think so. I with think who? With who? What team? I'm not sure. With, right. with Milan. Yeah. Oh, with Milan. They had a good team too, though, right? Compared to, oh, to so Roman so uh, Roma's players, so though. What do you mean? It plays a big difference. I'm not sure. Anybody else got anything else to add? Before we finish? Uh, to add. Well, let's uh, let's talk about what's coming what's coming up for the Serie A, the next... Uh, the next uh, uh, oh, I have yeah, something. I have that. something. There's a video that I want to show of mm. Palotta right after the match. I'm mm. sorry. Roma's it's, president. It's a minute guys. long. Let's listen to this. Mike, did you see this? Yeah, I saw it. Oh. I didn't. First of all, I want to congratulate Liverpool. Okay? I mean, they're a great team. But second of all, it's absolutely clear that VAR is needed in in Champions League because you just can't let stuff like this go. You all can look at it yourself on the film. Shirawe potentially, the 49th minute was an offside and he got taken down by the goalie. The 63rd minute was a handball that was obvious to everybody in probably the world except a few people on the pitch. The 67th minute, Sheik gets taken down in the box. I mean, it's just, you know, I know it's difficult to ref, but it's really embarrassing when we lose on aggregate like that and we would have had, by the way, it should have been a red card, which would have been 10 men in the 63rd minute, okay? So, again, Liverpool's a great team. Congratulations going forward. But, you know, if we don't get far in Champions League, stuff like this is just an absolute joke. 
He's a gentleman. And you then see, he walks away. Grande palota. What a gentleman. Uh, these guys are real gentlemen. He, I think said, he doesn't hide anything. He says as it is, but that's how it should he be. He didn't say anything bad to, to, no, to Liverpool exactly. and to anybody. No, exactly. He said congratulations moving forward. 100%. And uh, he's just making, making a comment about injustice uh, uh, on the field and on the pitch. That's what it is. Exactly. So he didn't even, even criticize the, the, the referees. He's probably saying that the VAR is needed for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, listen to me. Again, I might be biased, you think, but I think so, at this level here, some of the refs, they have, they have their hands tied by the big teams. Their, their hands are tied. They are afraid to make the right, the right call. I do feel like they're swayed a little okay, bit. Okay, no, we they are about afraid. Before. They are afraid of retaliation because what? some of them, they will never be called to ref a game. If I'm telling you. Uh, with all big teams, I agree with you. Um, one other thing about, you know, Palotta has been criticized this season by so many Roma fans. And I know we talk about Palotta a lot, but it's because he's very vocal and he's very active. And, uh, you know, he's with the fans. And they always say he's American. He doesn't know soccer. He's American. That's he doesn't know true. football. Right? We're, I mean, uh, look at the passion in his eyes and the hunger that he has and the belief. And, and I, I think that he deserves an apology from a lot of the fans who were doubting Palota, saying that he's only in this for the money. I mean, a guy who's in it for the money doesn't get this mad. He's you, would, a you would just be happy there. about being inside the, the semifinals of the Champions League. Exactly. So I give I give him a lot of credit. I think that a lot of Roma fans um, should be sorry. And I think that he, he gives off a winning mentality from the top. Remember how we talked about Italy and I said the fish rots from the top? At the top, I think Roma is very solid, very um, very great, and that's something that we need at, uh, in Italy. Well, well, I have a question for well you. Well done, President Pallotta. Oh, I mean, bravo, bravo, Pallotta. Uh, uh, <laughs> he knew the 63rd minute, the 67th yeah, he minute. <laughs> <He's got laughs> my, of I don't remember which minute. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he, got, he got the whole game in his mind at the minute. Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> that, oh, that's what a, pre a good president does. <laughs> you know? oh, I have a question for you. Uh, <laughs> You think that Roma after this uh, elimination? Please, not Kassan, no, please. Okay, no, okay. <laughs> you know everything about Kassan anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, do you think that Roma uh, definitely, will, you know, trusting Di Francesco is going is to come out from uh, uh, from this uh, defeat? You know, uh, I'm not sure about energizing because they, they spend a lot of energy into the game. Yeah. But for the the upcoming uh, game Sunday, uh, I don't know who they're going to play. But uh, I think what what do you think is going to be the, the 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 mentality? You think I, some I, of the top they're going to be rested and they they they're no, going to put I, the fresh the fresh legs on uh, on the yeah, pitch. Yeah, he probably is going to he's going to make some changes, but uh, whoever comes on on the on the field uh, they're going to do well. I mean, they uh, they should be proud like uh, Marco said, they should be proud of themselves. They uh, they did very well. So, whoever comes out He's as long as they it. don't come deflated, you mean? No, no. They're they playing won't. against Cagliari. No, oh. they, they won't. But they won't. Cagliari is in a very bad position. Yeah. Uh, right now, Cagliari's their last three games, they're two points from relegation. And they got, I, th I don't remember exactly. I'll, I'll find it right now. But Cagliari have to play Roma. I think it's... the worst. They, they have the worst legs uh, the, coming up, Cagliari. Yeah, I know. The worst. Roma, Fiorentina, and Atalanta. Mm. For Cagliari, I think, is risking to go down. One other thing that I think we need to comment on right now which changed, and um, it's it seems like Ancelotti is not going to be the Italian national team coach, and it's being reported the commissioner of the Fiji Chi has said that with Mancini, they've got this agreement that he wants to be the coach, and that the details are supposed to be finalized pretty soon, and Roberto Mancini is set to become the Azzurri coach. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I thought that's that's already. Uh, well, it was going back and forth. Well, they said that Ancelotti was in Rome and he met with them, and they didn't agree completely a deal. So there was a little bit of swap, and now they're saying it's back to Mancini. I like 100%. to know why Ancelotti did not agree and why Mancini did agree. Just for money, I don't think you know. At that level, those people they should be, they should be so honored to be to be considered and called upon. That five million a season apparently that's for a lot Mancini. Of money. Somebody, you know, when Saka has given you everything. <laughs> The least that you can do is just volunteer to no, coach Ancelotti a level like that. No, Ancelotti said it was not uh, because of money. Ancelotti said he wants to coach on a daily basis. No, no, I said five million for for Mancini. No, no, he said why didn't Ancelotti take the job? I think he should he, have taken the job. But he said it before. He wants to coach on a daily basis. He doesn't want to uh, be the national team coach. It's like a selection. You mm. make the selection. You, there's not a lot of coaching going on. So mm. that that was the reason we we talked about that mm. already. Do you like Mancini? I think Mancini. Uh, I think Mancini can do. Uh, he, he could take the team uh, maybe to the next level for a few years. I don't know if in the long run it's gonna it's gonna be there. He usually goes to a team and then after a few years, uh, it seems like uh, 
uh, he leaves. You know. Does he have an offensive uh, mentality, Mancini, uh, on your opinion, Gattano? Uh, Gattano? I think uh, he does. I mean, he, he did uh, he did with Manchester City, he yeah. did it with Inter, he stayed there. He the best players he, in the world know, at Man City. He, Man City, I mean... Mm -mm. Uh, he brought them in and he developed them. So a lot Man City of them billions of dollars. I, I think he knows who to bring in because at Inter he wanted certain players and if you don't give him those certain players, then, uh, then he leaves. Mm -hmm. So... If he takes the job, he knows the players that he has. It's not that uh, you know he's going to ask the president, uh, "You have to buy me this," and have, he knows already the players, and he can select from there. When he went, to, uh, when he was with Inter, the reason I think that he yeah. left is because they didn't buy the players that he wants. So I think it's clear or, or what he, the play, the type of players that he wants, uh, and he can put them on the field. Um, but then after uh, a few years, if things uh, uh, don't go the way his way, then he takes off. That's not a good sign. Yeah. We need a coach, not just for the Euros. We need a coach for the World I Cup. I feel like Mancini is one of those coaches him? that, like, you know what to expect from him. He just does the job. You're not going to expect anything extra from him. He just... No, the Mancini respects the game. I'm I not mean, saying he doesn't respect it. I just think... He he's he's a he's a good coach, no, listen, nothing more. Let, let I me don't just like say I something about Mancini, and then you can say whatever you want, Marco. I think Mancini is a player that is uh, is a coach that is going to command a lot of respect from the players because they know the quality of him as a player. You can just go back and watch the, the quality of this guy. The guy had a lot of qualities on his feet. I feel like he always gets some fights with players for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no? Balotelli's not going to get called out. Mancini expects a lot. Expects get a lot. I don't know. They have a few. Mancini you know. expects a lot from the player. That's why everyone, when they're going to be playing for Mancini, they're going to be just leave everything that they have into the field over there because that's what he's, expect for, he's expecting from the player. And I think that uh, a lot of players, that they, they will love to be uh, considered to be part of the national team that Mancini is going to be the coach. So I'm, I'm not. Too, I'm not. Having too said that, you know, go ahead. I'm not too impressed. I mean, I hate the argument of he's better than Ventura because let's be honest, anybody's, any, better, anybody's than better than Ventura. <laughs> so, and that's not the standards that we should be looking at. To me, it was for for what I wanted. Of course, I wanted Ancelotti or I wanted Conte, and and I would have loved Conte first. Um, and I think he was a, he's a perfect coach. But of course, I there's there's a lot of things that we don't know. Um, I think that Mancini's he's he's a. I, I, I don't know. I'm scared with his relationship with players. I'm scared of his commitment. I'm scared if he's if he's good enough to get us to the place. I guess we could say that he's better than Ventura, but those are not very high standards. Listen, we have to start when, from uh, somewhere. Gatano, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, just going back. I think I think you're right. Sometimes when uh, he's on the sideline and the player makes a mistake. You know, he shows it to everybody how disgusted he is with that player, and that sometimes. You know, doesn't look good. One thing about Klopp, which uh, I think we saw it uh, in the final. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't watch Liverpool every Sunday, but we saw it in the final against Roma. Um, I mean, the guy he went and he he hugged all his players. He you know he he, he embraces them. He kisses them. He even went and uh, uh, and hugged the Rossi and Florenzi. You know, after so he gets very personal, and, and I think he keeps everybody together. And I guess if he has to scream at you, he will scream at you. Which is but, good. But at the end of the game, you know, there's the personal uh, uh, that he has with his players, which uh, it's it's I think it's nice to see. Do you want to say anything about Il Classico, Il Classico of uh, this week? I uh, want to say nothing about a classic. You know what it's I want to say that it's, it's going to be a, a washed out game because the, the the championship has been already won by Barcelona, and I think uh, it's going to be more of a good vibe to to Iniesta from the uh, from the crowd. Any other games? So uh, we've got the Cinco de Mayo. Where are we, where oh, we got, <laughs> look, we have the Cinco de Mayo coming yeah, up. You got Milan playing over there. Oh, Milan, and, Milan and, Verona. and Verona, Juventus, and Bologna, and then on Sunday, Udinese, Inter, Lazio, Atalanta. It's a good game. Mm. Uh, Spal Benevento, Chirona, Crotone, Genoa, Fiorentina, Napoli, Torino. Oh, Napoli, Torino is a good game. Sassuolo, Sampdoria, and Cagliari, uh, Cagliari, Roma. Nothing too good. But, yeah. but, but, these relegation teams, I'm telling you, they're the yeah. ones to watch. Those yeah. guys. And there's a lot on the line, too. Roma need to be careful in the Champions because League. Because Lazio, Lazio, Lazio is breeding Lazio's under is right there. Inter is going to want to come back. And, oh, Immobile mm -hmm. is out for 15 to 20 days. So, 
We're not. He, He's not he, coming back. He might make the last game against Inter. He might not. So I think that there's still hope for Inter to try to do something. So there's a lot on the line. We still got a Scudetto race. We still got a Champions League, a few Champions League spots. We got the. We don't know who's gonna come in. Who's gonna come in third? We don't know who's gonna come in fourth. And um, at the bottom of the table, Benevento, obviously. We and we know. still have the way for competition because and Capo Milan and Atalanta, they're still fighting. Don't and Capo Canoniere, uh, top chart. Now Immobile is uh, injured. So now and we have the Coppa Italia. Hey, don't Jumper forget Jumper. the Coppa Italia. We have Juventus Milan. That's true. That's coming we going? Up. That's coming. What is it You're next week? Going. Shall we? <laughs> hey, can we go? <laughs> Talking to you. <laughs> Are we going? That's next week. Yeah. I think, right? I think it's Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday. Let's go. The 10th, I believe. Um, do you want to mm. go all the way there and watch Milan lose? No oh way. No way. I think we're going to win. We Look, beat Juventus already. It's not the first time that we Look beat Juventus. Look at another time to get stuff done, right? It might be the ninth uh, on the um, Juventus-Milan. Check. Yeah, it's either the ninth or the 10th. Uh, but anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Antonio, tell them what they got to do. Guys, just put the five stars all the time. Like you go to your best hotel with the five stars. <laughs> rate the podcast with five stars. End uh, of the story. And guys, also, uh, you can check this on uh, audio, not just on video. So if you're going to work, going to school, commuting, uh, you can catch us on Spreaker. You can catch us on iTunes. You can catch us on SoundCloud. Google Play. Play. Google iTunes, Play. Facebook. iTunes. It's yeah. on Facebook. It's, it's on, on Facebook. YouTube. It's on YouTube. The okay. links will be in the description. I don't have any one of those anyway. <laughs> 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 Good job. Good job, Marco. Good job, Mike. All right, guys. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, Ciao ragazzi. Guys.